usually you see shortening lifespans um, after a famine, after Hiroshima, after the fall of the Soviet Union, but it doesn't happen in 2015 the United States, a time of prosperity and lowering crime rates and factors like that. There really are very few historical correlates for what we're seeing in the South and Midwest right now. What we're seeing is shortening lifespans, and not just shortening lifespans, but shortening lifespans among people who are in the demographic majority, white men. That, that issue, just in the past 100 years, really is 1915 to 1918. That's the last time that white men have had a three-year drop in, in lifespan the way they're seeing it now. And that's because of the First World War and the flu, you know, the flu pandemic. reason we're seeing shortened lifespans is in part about addiction and part about economics, but it's also about particular health policies. And what I'm trying to illustrate is these are terrible health policies. <laughs> it's almost like an epidemic or what eco economists have, have called deaths of despair. But the irony here is that people are voting for these policies that are shortening their own lifespans. For example, uh, in Tennessee, I studied what happened when the state blocked um, really implementation of the Affordable Care Act or, um, or, or expansion of any kind of government health care safety net. And what I found was that that act alone ended up costing every white person in the state on the aggregate about two to three weeks of their life. Uh, when I looked at uh, the liberalization of gun laws in the state of Missouri, this, the, the effects were pretty remarkable. What happened as it became easier and easier to get guns, uh, on one hand, many people felt like that was um, the bolstering their Second Amendment rights, but when I looked at the health data, what I saw were soaring rates of not just gun homicide, but also gun suicide, accidental shootings, um, partner violence, and ultimately what I found was that the, that the lost, there were over 12,000 lost life years just in the first five years that those policies ended up passing. In the state of Kansas, they basically did these massive tax cuts that ended up um, enriching people at the very top of the economic system, but were terrible for working class people. And what happened when you started to cut away budgets from schools is that people started to drop out of high school. And what I found in my research was that dropping out of high school correlated with about a five to seven year shorter lifespan for a variety of reasons. these politics of racial resentment have long and often invisible histories in, in the South. And so part of what I try to tell in the book is a history of why these issues weren't just invented yesterday or even with the election of President Trump. When, you, when I talk to everyday people, really, I found a longing to solve some of these issues. In other words, people wanted better health care. Uh, they wanted safer communities. The problem was there were so many divisive messages coming through that told them, if you agree to any form of gun control, you're no longer a, a good conservative, you're no longer a good white person. If you agree to any form of Obamacare, that's not our platform. And so in a way, these policies were being coded as almost racial identities is what I call them in the book, that to give an inch was to give a yard. And to even consider something that might be a bit more centrist was coded as treason. I wasn't trying to assess who was racist and who wasn't. I, I don't know what was in any person's heart, and I wasn't doing an assessment of their identity. Um, the, the, the key piece of information, as far as I'm concerned, was whether or not an individual person was racist. The risk factor came because they elected politicians whose policies were based in this, these rhetorics of racial resentment, in other words, anti-immigrant, anti-government, pro-gun policies. And when those policies became what dictated the policies of particular states, everybody's health suffered regardless of whether they themselves were racist or not. I'm encouraged 
that there are progressive movements bubbling up in many, in many southern states. And I think that um, younger voters in particular who are feeling energized are pushing for health care. They're pushing for common sense gun laws that respect the Second Amendment, but also try to stem the tide of epidemic levels of, of, of gun injury and death. But I do think part of the issue is the minute that um, working class conservative voters start realizing that these policies are killing them and asking for better policies from their leaders, I think that's, that's the moment that, that things begin to change.